milk really get into the breast and how does it keep coming time and time again? The lactating breast undergoes a fascinating process that will support the growth and development of the newborn. You probably noticed early in your pregnancy that your breasts had become fuller and your nipples were more tender than before. On the outside of the breast, you can see a darkened area around the nipple called the areola. Your nipple and the areola may have enlarged and darkened, and the small bumps on the areola, called Montgomery glands, become more prominent. The Montgomery glands are thought to be the source of the mother's smell, which helps the baby to find the breast and to recognize his mother. With this growth, blood flow to the breasts increases and veins in the breast may become clearly visible. Inside the breast are fat and supporting tissue that give the breast its size and shape. Nerves which transmit messages from the breast to the brain to trigger the release of hormones. Little sacs of milk producing cells or alveoli that produce milk. Milk ducts that carry milk to the nipple. Surrounding each milk producing cell are small muscles that contract to squeeze the milk out into the ducts. There is also a network of blood vessels around the alveolus that brings the nutrients to the cells to make milk. Starting around the third month of pregnancy, a cocktail of hormones leads to the proliferation of the milk-making cells and ducts in your breasts as they prepare for milk production, much like getting a factory up and ready for production. About halfway through your pregnancy, your body has become fully capable of producing breast milk, which means that even if your baby is born prematurely, you will be able to produce breast milk. Colostrum is the first milk that is produced, and some women notice this about midway through pregnancy. Some don't. It makes no difference to future milk production either way. It's not unusual to hear a new mom on the first day after birth say, but I don't have any milk. Although small in amount, colostrum is highly nutritious and is available in the breast in quantities that are close to the capacity of a newborn baby's stomach. Your body is signaled to begin milk production with the expulsion of the placenta. Once this occurs, the levels of the hormones progesterone and estrogen start dropping to a point where they can no longer stop the action of prolactin and the other hormones necessary for milk production. The initial manufacture of milk happens whether the baby is put to the breast or not. Continued milk production is another matter. This depends on frequent and regular stimulation of the breasts and the removal of milk. When your baby's mouth touches the nipple and areola, nerve cells will send a signal to your brain causing the release of hormones, the two main ones being prolactin and oxytocin. Prolactin activates the milk-producing cells. There are receptors in the breast tissue that recognize and respond to specific hormones. Frequent feeding in the early days helped to develop prolactin receptors, thus making the breast more sensitive to prolactin. Oxytocin is responsible for making the milk available to your baby by causing tiny muscle cells within the breast to contract, squeezing milk from the milk cells, widening and shortening the milk ducts, and releasing milk to baby via the nipple. This release of milk is called a letdown or milk ejection reflex. The breasts don't flow all the time. The letdown is like baby turning the tap on. Several letdowns occur during a breastfeed. Some women feel the first one, but none feel the subsequent ones. According to research from the University of Western Australia, baby receives about 35 mils of milk per letdown. The only determinant of the amount of milk baby receives is the number of letdowns that occur during a feed, not the numbers on a clock. Breast size and storage capacity. Many women worry that their breasts are not the right size for breastfeeding. Breast size does not determine how much milk is produced. Breast storage capacity varies greatly among women and is not necessarily related to breast size. So some women may need to feed more frequently than others. 
but breast size or storage capacity does not determine how much milk you make overall. The more milk your baby drinks or that you remove from the breast, the more milk your body will produce. Back to the factory analogy. The more orders that come in, the more need for the factory to speed up production to fill the orders. If baby is getting milk from another factory, i.e. formula, the breast factory will not be getting the order, so will downsize production. Giving supplements in the first two months has been shown by researchers to significantly decrease milk supply. Enough milk. Just like the factory, the more furiously the orders come in, the more the indication for increased production. On day one, your newborn baby's stomach capacity is only about one teaspoon, so frequent small feeds are required. This frequent feeding in the first few days allows for good practice for both mom and baby before the milk volume increases dramatically. Baby's stomach capacity increases along with the milk supply. Frequent feeds in the early days sets the breast for future milk production. To illustrate your baby's stomach size, for day one, look at the size of a marble, a good marble for day three, and a golf or ping pong ball for day 10. What comes out must have gone in. By day five, a good indication that baby is getting ample milk is what he is presenting you with in his nappy. He will have at least five wet nappies per day, and more importantly, his poos or stools will have changed from black to green to yellow. He will have at least four loose yellow stools per day, maybe many more. After about three to six weeks, some babies will change their stooling pattern and only have one large stool every three or four days, or maybe at even longer intervals. This is normal and does not mean that your baby is constipated. Apply Bepantan ointment at every nappy change. Bepantan is effective in the everyday prevention as well as treatment of nappy rash. Colostrum or newborn milk. In the first few days, the breast produces yellowish milk called colostrum. This is milk specifically designed for the newborn period. Its main function is to provide protection, enhance the baby's immune system and mature the baby's digestive tract. The colostrum also protects the gut by lining the intestines against potential allergens and has a laxative property which helps the baby pass the first stool called meconium and thus helps lessen the incidence and severity of newborn jaundice. This milk is thick and sticky in consistency and is secreted in small amounts but is all your newborn baby requires. Mature milk. Between days two and eight, the milk increases in quantity and changes in appearance and composition. This is the mature milk. This is sometimes referred to as the milk coming in, an unfortunate phrase that implies there was no milk before that, which of course is just not so. As the mature milk becomes available, the breasts may feel heavy and lumpy. This fullness rarely lasts more than 24 hours. It is due to congestion in the breasts and not just the accumulation of milk. It is important to keep the milk flowing at this stage by feeding frequently. Releasing the milk allows for the lymph and blood to drain away more effectively and lessens the congestion. Fore milk and hind milk. Full milk is the milk that can be expressed from a breast prior to a feed. Hind milk is the milk that can be expressed from that same breast immediately following the end of a feed. There is no magic number of minutes a baby needs to breastfeed in order to get the hind milk. The fat and calorie content of breast milk varies from the beginning of a feed to the end. It's a process. It is quite possible for the fore milk at one feed to have more fat than the hind milk at another feed. Fore milk is not an inferior type of milk. It is full of important nutrients that are vital to your baby. Fat content in hind milk is reliant on many different factors. However, 70% of the variability of fat in milk 
is due primarily to two things, the degree of fullness of the breast and the time elapsed since the previous feed. The emptier the breast, the higher the fat content. The shorter the interval between feeds, the higher the fat content. Research has shown that it isn't important how we feed babies at any one given feed, for example, finishing the first side first, etc., but rather the volume that is received over a 24-hour period that is important for infant growth.